Okay, in this video, we're going to look at finite state machines and we'll apply it to embedded programming. So we could build a finite state machine and run it on one of these uh, single board computers like this. So what is a finite state machine? Well, it's a technique or tool for solving and designing computer programs. So we will build a finite state machine and run it on the single board computer. And that will decode a sequence of key presses on this keypad. So a key press sequence of 1, 2, 3 will turn on one of the GPIO pins on the single board computer and activate the onboard LED. And a key press sequence of 7, 8, 9 will turn off the LED. So we'll have a look at the finite state machine diagram that will do this. Okay, here's a finite state diagram of our keypad decoder, which will decode a key press sequence of 1, 2, 3 as a function on and a 7, 8, 9 as a function off. And you can see our program consists of five states. So each one of those circles is a state, S0 to S4. And the program moves from state to state based on the current input values. As we can see here, here's an input 2 feeding into state 3. And each one of these arrows into the between states are called transitions. Now a state is an idle time where it's waiting for an input and only one state at a time can be active. So we'll start at state 0. And this is where our input is into our finite state machine. So it's looking for a 1 or a 7 for the, for the function on or function off sequence. If it doesn't get a 1 or a 7, say it gets a 4, it will just reset itself, 5, a 6. So if it gets a 1, then 1 will be in, in state 0. And then in state 3, it will be looking for a 2. And if it gets a 2, then state 4 will be looking for a 3. And if it gets a 3, then the function will go on. And this is our accepting state with the double, double circles. And then it will go back to uh, the state 0, which is a reset state, waiting for the next uh, keypad sequence, which will be 7, 8, 9, to turn it off. So now it's looking for a 7. And if it gets a 7 in, in state 0, then state 1 will be looking for an 8. And state 2 will be looking for a 9, which will get its function off, accepting state. And then it will go back to the state 0 for uh, reset again. Now anytime uh, there's a wrong uh, digit entered, say for instance here instead of a 2 it gets say a 4, then it will go back to the reset state, state 0. Same here, it's looking for an 8. If it gets say a 4, then it will go back to the reset state. So that's basically the program there and we'll look at the software to make up this finite state machine. Okay, here's the code for the finite state machine for the keypad decoder. And this is a finite state machine construct. And you, see, you can see the code here for state 0, for state 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I have spaces in between each state. And the name of this finite state machine is called test. So you, you can see test throughout the whole code. And these are the input values that the states are expecting to see from the keypad. So how are you to read this? In state 0, if the 7 was a match, it would go to state 1. If 1 was a match, it would go to state 3. And if there's no match, it would go back to, to uh, state 0, the reset. So it would go back to the reset state. So if you entered 1, 2, 3 to turn a function on, it would look at the first case statement, and it would see a 7, so there's no match. Go to the next one, and it would see a 1. Yeah, that would be a match. So it would, go, it would say go to state 3. So we go down to state 3. Now it's looking for a 2. So if you enter a 2, you get a match. And then it will go to state 4. And if you go down to state 4, it's looking for a 3. And if 3 is entered, then the function would go on. And then it would go back to a reset state, 0. Back again, ready for uh, the 789 code to turn it off. So now we're back to state 0. We enter a 7. And it sees it right off the bat there. So it says 7, go to state 1. So we go to state 1. Now it's looking for an 8. And if it gets an 8, go to state 2. So go to state 2. It's right looking for a 9. So if it gets a 9, then the function will be off. And it will go back to 0, which is, which is the reset state, back to 0. So if we, get a, if we get an error, say we go 1, 2, 4. So here it's expecting uh, to see a 3, but it gets a 4. There will be a no match, and it, it won't turn the function on, but it will go back to the, to the 0 state, back again for, for a new input. 
So that's a pretty simple construct. And next we'll see how this actually works. We'll actually run this code on the signal board computer. Okay, I got the program up and running on the signal board computer. I had to turn down the lights a little bit so you could see that LED come on. And I mapped it to the keyboard to make it a little bit easier to, sh to demonstrate this. So right now the LED is off. The LED is right down there. And I'll type 1, 2, 3. LED is on. 7, 8, 9. LED is off. I'll go 1, 2, 4. 1, 2, 5, 6, 7. Go back to 1, 2, 3. On. 7, 8, 9. Off. So you can see it's decoding it properly. And actually I'll show you a little program I have running on the screen also. Okay, I'll run the finite state machine named test. And I'll enter 1, 2, 3. You can see the function came on. So it saw state 0, 1, and then it jumped to state 3, and then it jumped to state 4. So now I'll turn it off. 7, 8, 9. You can see the function is off. So, so it's now it's back to state 0. So if I hit 1, 2, 4, it resets it. 1, 2, 3, function on. If I go 7, 8, 0, reset. 7, 8, 9, function off. 